Ken here uh, from Restoration Artisans and we are working up at the top of this 1820s gable farmhouse. And if you remember from previous videos, this whole roof line has been taken off by another contractor and extended. So the whole roof line is much higher than it was originally. So this steel beam was put in and then a post all the way to the top to support the ridge. Our project has been to be able to extend the stonework here all the way up to the peak of the roof. So as you can see down at the bottom here, we started way down at the bottom and uh, started fading stonework in all the way through, building it up all the way through here, up above this window. And this was just set today, so this is all uh, wet mud here. So this uh, mortar that we're using is a uh, hydraulic lime mortar from France. Um, and so we're using that so that it has the best compatibility with the old um, dirt bedding mud uh, mortar. So right now we're working on that. Uh, we're working on this section. You can see the way this is constructed here. And what we're dealing with is about 18 to 20 inch thick stone walls. And so you have a front uh, course of stone called a withe. So you have a front withe and you have the backer withe or the front stone face stone and you have the backer stone. What we're doing essentially is building these two walls up. Sometimes we run tie stones through. You can see the old construction right here. So we'll just set this stone in right here. Filler stones go in, extra lime. This all gets flattened out. The next course then we'll get some stone down in there. Because this is hydraulic lime mortar, we always try to make sure we're not putting, we're not putting uh, stones in that are extremely dry. So we might dampen them a little bit and the mortar tends to set a little bit slower, but then that dry stone doesn't break the bond. It has a really good bond. And then can we get some mud up top here? Now what we're trying to do is we're tying it into the old mortar here. Now, when this wall was built, you can see you have the front course of stone and you have the back course of stone. Now one thing that I'm not sure if I mentioned in the other videos is the color of this stone. And you can see it has a real light colored, pale blue color. Areas where it's dark here, it's wet. But on the interior of this uh, stone, the face has got this pale blue color because over time with the sun and then oxygen, this whole thing will oxidize to this pale blue color. This limestone on the interior is a dark blue color. So even the stone that we're laying in right now that we're setting, it has a little bit more of a darkness to it. But if we give it 15, 20, 25 years, it will really start to blend in really well. The most important part is trying to find stone that it matches uh, and is the same uh, type of stone. So if we look at the wall here, we can see the construction of it. We see the face stone. We see the rubble fill on the inside. Um, when these stones are set, we also use pinning stones, which are these tiny little stones right here when we're laying it up. So each one of these stones would have had small pinning stones put in. They're covered with this cement mortar right now. You can't see them. So the, the backer course of the wall is right here. And you have the backer withe and the, the front withe of stone and then the rubble fill. Now, what type of mortar did they use back in 1820? Well, this is the type of mortar they used. So you can see it has a little bit of animal hair in there, maybe pig hair or horse hair. Um, it's really a, a clay or a dirt that they would have just gotten up out of the ground. You can see there's a little bit of lime in there. That lime is from a lime kiln. That's the white specks in the uh, mix right there. A lot of horse hair, a lot of pig hair, whatever that is. Um, this does not have a very high compressive strength, but essentially it's, it's dirt and then the lime helps to make it take a set. And you can see that the strength of it is not, it's not very strong. I mean, I can break it right apart, um, but we're not looking for PSI strength in the mortar here. What we're looking for is something that can just hold the wall together cohesively. Really the strength comes from the way the stonework is laid. So on the outside, we want to have a lime mortar joint here. Now that's a higher lime content that we would point this up with. And that lime mortar actually seals the moisture from coming through the wall and rinsing out the, the mud bedding uh, mortar. 
So we have a couple of issues with this wall that we're trying to work through. Like a lot of old stone work, this wall has moved over time. So we have out of a four foot section right here, we're plumb right about there. So you can see, I can put my hand in there probably about three and a half to four inches out of plumb in a four foot uh, section, four foot high. So this right here is, uh, it's, it's a very difficult issue because uh, we need to be able to match up our old stone work uh, to our new stone work, but still build it that it's structurally sound. If we build this with too much of a lean, that's not good. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to fade the bottom stone work in, and then when we get to the top here, we're gonna take it plumb, straight up. So we'll come straight up top there. Sorry, I'm, I'm showing you a level without a broken level here, but we're just looking at this side. This level has had some mileage right here. But essentially, we're gonna go straight up from, from right here. So it, it has the foundation that it still has. We're not planning on tearing down any more stonework. Um, what could have been done, we could have taken this all the way down until it got to a plumb spot. But really, that would have been taking down the majority of the wall here, which would have been a lot of extra work. So the steel was put in. That bears on good stone work here. Um, they have all this new framing in, and then we're restoring these uh, 20 inch thick walls um, the proper way. Um, after this is all completed, hopefully mid next week, we'll get the stone laying done. And then we will be uh, cutting out the remaining joints right here, which we've been prepping that uh, down the wall. We've been removing the old cement mortar joints, which this, remember this is not the original mortar. This is mortar that was put in probably in the 1950s or 60s. And it's a ribbon joint. It's a completely different uh, type of mortar and a completely different joint profile from the way it was constructed in the 1820s. So what we're doing is we're restoring it to the original uh, joint profile, original color, um, and also the original material. So we're using the lime mortars from uh, Saint Astier from France. And uh, so it's gonna, it's gonna come out great, it's gonna look good, and the walls will breathe. So when the wall gets wet, it'll be able to release moisture like a sponge back into uh, uh, the environment. And it won't trap the moisture inside, which could cause beams to rot and other issues with uh, the interior of the stone wall. What we're doing here, we're all the way up at the top of the wall right now. We're planning on setting the last uh, peak stone, which we have cut. It's a triangular stone. We have to build up all the st small stones uh, in and around uh, that stone that can support it. It's really tedious work when you get up to the top of the eave because you're in a tight place. Only one person can really work. You're trying to fill in the back course of stone as far in as you can. And it's just slow going, uh, trying to fit pieces in. Um, but yeah, that's what we're working on right now. So just watch some of the progress and hopefully we'll be able to fit that big stone in up at the top. We always use the small stones to be able to chip the, chip the wall or pin the wall. These are pinning stones. And what we'll do is we'll knock these stones out, but those stones will help keep the uh, stone from crushing the mortar out. It's gonna fit, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to, yeah. see this right here? Yeah. I'd like to have a stone shim. Nate, if we could cut a stone shim that would come across here and balance this out a little bit better, yeah. and then when I put it in, It'll be a little bit more pinched in there and a little bit more level and even. Here we go. Let's put a little bit of mud right on the back here. Cool. Grab hold of that side. Pick this bastard up. All right, hold on, hold on. Just 
kick this in. Oh wow, let me just let me just try and get it. Oh man. Hold on, wait, it's tipping. Got a tipper. All right, I'll take it. The final stone has been put in. Uh, we built up to the peak up here. Um, we, right now, all the mortar is pretty wet. It's in a really rough state. So we want to wait for it to take a set, then we can strike it back a little bit. We can brush it, just brush in, make sure the joints are sealed up as well as uh, they can be sealed up for the, for the bedding mud. Um, obviously the stone has a lot of lime on it right now. And also this was reclaimed stone. So there was a lot of built up uh, dirt and debris from, from uh, other projects. So once we have it all, uh, once we have it all finished here, we'll go over it, pressure wash it, um, use a little bit of masonry cleaner on it to clean up the surface. And then we'll obviously come and repoint everything. So this isn't the final look of the wall. Um, this is kind of the in-between uh, process right here. You can see the, the peak stone and then where the uh, framing ends right here, the carpenters are going to come in and they're, they're going to be putting a trim board up because this wall really had a lot of uh, undulation to it. The whole wall is, it was out of plumb by about four inches. And so we had to bring this section that we rebuilt back into plumb and tie it into the back courses. Uh, so it's not that the wall is perfectly straight, but that's pretty much par for the course with uh, historic buildings. So if you like this video, feel free to subscribe and to like our YouTube page. Um, we're going to be putting up new restoration videos as the days go on, as the weeks go on. Uh, also check out our website, restorationartisans.com. And we work primarily here in uh, Pennsylvania, southeastern Pennsylvania. So thanks a lot.